time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Go hit it. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram, Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And it's time to get this reaction video started. Right, y'all. I did the um, five mysterious temples video the other day, and then I was asked, to, you know, to focus in on the temple and of the treasures and Pad Manab Haswami. Pad, let me try. Pad because everybody was making fun of how I said this. They were like, "Oh, you met." I was trying. I really try. I do. Pan Man, Pan Manab Haswari, Swami. I'm trying. I try with these, but they're like, you have to look deeper into this, watch this video, because this is like the treasures and where, like Krishna, this was like the, the treasures for Krishna and everything. I was like, oh, you know, my Lord Krishna, I got to check it out. So let's check this out together. Y'all ready? Go. Let's see. Let's see. It's in detail. Which is the richest religious body in the whole world? That is a very difficult question to answer. Oh, okay. You see, much of the wealth of many religious bodies is intangible and almost impossible to value. Mm -hmm. But going That's by true. bankers' estimates, the richest religious body was believed to be the city-state of the Vatican, oh, with yeah. its priceless historical treasures and invaluable that. artwork. The richest like temple in India, Catholic. well, at least until about a decade ago, was believed to be the Venkateshwara Temple in Tirupati, in the southern state of Andhra. Okay. And then, in 2011, an ancient temple in Kerala burst into the picture and it proved to be way richer than both these bodies put together. That's when they opened Here's the, the story. One of the vaults or something. I see in secret vaults and one of them... We are at the Padmanabha Swami temple in Tiruvananthapuram in Kerala. This temple has existed for centuries, tucked away amidst the lagoons and the coconut trees, oh. quietly minding its own business. In 2011, a person working at the temple went to court complaining that the temple funds were being mismanaged. Oh, and that's the court, in all its wisdom, ordered that the temple assets be inventoried. Oh, okay. Off went the auditors down into the underground chambers where the vaults were located and were there surprises waiting for them. Only six vaults were initially declared. They found two more. When they entered the vaults and shone their torches in, they could hardly believe their eyes. Wow. Large containers filled to the brim with precious stones, coins and jewelry were lying scattered all over the floor. What did it include? Among other things, a necklace of pure gold, 18, 18 feet, feet long. long, a solid gold throne studded with diamonds, thousands of gold chains and many thousands of golden pots. Wow. And coins. I'd many, like many coins. I want just one coin. Medieval, Roman <laughs> and pre-Christian era coins, oh, some dating as far back as what? 200 BCE. They say there is over 1300 tons of gold in those vaults. Add all the other treasures and the net worth of this temple is conservatively I estimated at a whopping 40 billion. billion US dollars. And that is just the material value. You see, most of these items are priceless. antiques and are in fact saying. priceless. I just want to breathe so the same how air. did this temple <laughs> come into so much wealth? Kerala has always been a wealthy state and has been trading with Arabia, Europe and Africa for at least 2000 years. Much of this excess wealth made its way to the temple as it usually does in India. Also for centuries, the local South Indian dynasties have been giving gifts to this famous temple. The Choras, Cheras, Pandyas, and of course the Travancore kings. Even after wars, when new kings took over, the royal patronage to the temple would continue. After all, these were their gods too. So rarely was a temple brought down. Later, between the 17th and 19th centuries, Hindu rulers seeking refuge from invading armies were often allowed to settle down in Travancore. They too used these walls to keep their wealth safe. Okay. In 1750, something very significant That's happened. On January 18, 1750, the then king of Travancore, Marthandavarma, walked into this temple and placed his personal sword, a symbol of his power, at the feet of the Lord. He declared that everything he owned, his entire kingdom, now belonged to the Lord and he was only the custodian. And with that, the deity of the temple, Lord Padmanabha Swami, officially became the king of Travancore. 
Martanda Varma took on the role of administrator, managing this kingdom on behalf of the Lord. Kerala became God's own country, quite literally, and all the wealth oh, of Kerala beautiful. became God's personal wealth, quietly hidden away in the temple vaults. All this wealth has been accumulating there for centuries now. Even the British recognized this shift in power. Every time the idol of Lord Padmanabha Swami was taken out in procession, he was accorded a 21-gun salute by the British, an honor they normally reserved for friendly kings who were extra special. This transfer of power from king to god is called Tripadidana, oh, and it created new traditions that. that are followed to this day. Oh. The king must visit the lord every day and give an account of all administrative activities of the kingdom. If he fails to visit, he has to pay a fine. Ooh. A princely sum of about 150 rupees. So that adds up too. 300 years have passed, he can't even but go the Lord travel. still calls the shots at Tiruvannantapuram. In 1932, when the new airport was commissioned, the king very generously donated land for its construction, with one condition: the temple procession must continue as before. You so see, twice a year, Lord Padmanabha Swami's idol is taken in procession to the beach, and Ooh. the new runway came up right on its path. Did the temple procession change its route? Of course not. <laughs> Twice a year, they just the stopped the plane. Airport is shut down oh, for look. five few hours, <laughs> allowing the procession to pass through. It is the That's kingdom right. of the gods That's after right. all, and they wait for no airplanes. <laughs> so what happens to all this wealth now? Yeah, that does it remain question. with God? Does it go back to the people? I just want one. Does it belong to the descendants of the Travancore kings, <laughs> or does it go to the government? Not As the you government. would expect, Not this the... weighty matter landed up in courts. Oh, really? Oh. And recently, the court upheld the rights of the Travancore royal family to continue as administrators of the temple treasures. But they so just for now, look it. all that wealth is safe, locked up in the underground walls so of this ancient the temple. temple. But there is think. an exciting detail I haven't shared with you yet. There is still one vault at the temple oh, yeah, which remains this. locked. Vault B. No one knows what's inside. It seems that the doors of this particular vault have the dreaded image of a Nobody, snake. Everybody's scared to go in that one. Ill omen. Uh -huh. The temple priests swear that terrible things will happen if the door is opened. And so, no one has dared to open what it. What do you think's in there? Yet, what secrets could it be hiding? Evil Can't spirits? They do some kind of like... Or perhaps accounts of a royal scandal? Or unimaginable wealth? We may never know. Know. And that may be a <laughs> good thing know. too. That silver and gold artifacts are part later removed. However, there's still no. Did you like the story? Oh, that was. Good. We have many. I want to know what's in that other part. Can't they do some kind of like, like Superman could see through walls? <laughs> Where's that technology? Where's the technology? You don't have to open it. We can just like. Or maybe even like can't you like drill through there? Maybe put like a, a microscope, you know, or like a uh, some kind of video camera like through there to just look around. <laughs> I kind of want to know. <laughs> I mean, I'd be scared too. If I they were like, oh, it has snakes and they're like, don't enter, and it has the bad omens. Oh, I wouldn't be in there either. I'd be, I'd be like, stay away from there. Don't even get close. <laughs> I'd be the same way. But I just want to know. <laughs> I kind of just want to know. What do you think's in there? What if it's like, like the body of one of the gods that was here before? Oh, wouldn't that be something? You know, like their burial place. That's what they do a lot, right? You, I mean, you hear like Egypt and they had the mummies and all. And then, I mean, we bury uh, the bodies here and everything. All right, I got, I'm, look, all these things are going through my head now. I want to know. Let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Until next time, y'all.